Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to this latest climate update across California. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with the National Weather Service. We're going to talk about the wet start and the change to a very dry weather pattern for water year 2019 and 20 and provide an outlook all the way through March and the rest of spring. This is what it looks like so far since the start of the water year, October 1st, 2019. Most of California on the left-hand side is 50% or only slightly more of average. Now across Southern California, that very wet start in November and December has mostly eroded. And now we're seeing the orange and yellow take over as we're dropping below average for this date. Now, of course, precipitation will occur on February 22nd in Southern California. So that'll help slow some of the decline. Temperature wise across the state of California since the start of the water year because of the lack of rainfall and storm track has been above average, especially in central and northern California. All right, across California for January through February to date, it has been very dry, 25% or less for central and southern California. Very little precipitation, basically two events for southern California. Now, the temperatures have been running right about average, and we've had some cooler air move through the region and cooler nights. But you can see over the mountain regions, due to lack of precipitation, temperatures are running much above average since January 1, the start of the new year 2020. Now, February 2020 is probably going down in the record books for being dry. We could be breaking records in parts of Central and Northern California. Remember, this is the wettest month on record, even wetter than some months such as January and March. So precipitation, when it is missed in February, it is significant across most of California. You can see most of the precipitation has been going up and around across the Northern Great Basin and Northern Rockies and into the deep Southwest. We'll talk a little bit about that pattern. Some of the numbers across Southern California. San Diego is the only remaining spot above average because of the significant rain we saw on Thanksgiving Day and December 26. Now, other locations such as Santa Ana and Riverside are rapidly dropping. Look at Riverside, over three inches below average. Our mountain locations, of course, will pick up some precipitation, probably less than an inch of water, but still uh, that'll help their February totals, but overall they are also running several inches below average. This is the eight station precipitation index, basically a very significant indicator of how wet the weather pattern or how dry the weather pattern has been in California. This looks at the northern Sierra Nevada. We are looking at 53% of average for the date. So now we're looking at falling even further below the pace of 2017, 2018, which was very dry. How about the snowpack? This takes a look at the snow water equivalent, how much snow and how much water is in it sitting over the higher elevations of the Sierra Nevada. And you can see that number continues to drop as well with lack of precipitation and even some snow melt. We are looking at the April 1st average, which is the average deepest snowpack in that region only at 41 percent. Now for this date we're looking at 45 to 55 percent so basically half the snowpack that we should see for this time in February. The weather pattern what has caused these extremes in 2019-2020? Well we had the same upper level ridge block but it was in a much different pattern uh, in November and December. This is a very similar pattern to what we're seeing on February 22nd. Storm system comes directly from the north over that ridge, and really the main precipitation only occurs when it crosses over the California Bight and into Southern California. Well, that was the pattern in November and December repeatedly, and that is what led to our very wet start, but that was still relatively dry for far Northern California. Now the storm track since January 1st has changed, We've seen that upper level ridge become more broader and flatter with a deep trough of low pressure in the upper atmosphere, basically the jet stream, amplifying that jet stream across the northern Pacific from Alaska straight across Washington Pacific Northwest. That's been the primary storm track and then it moves into 
the Tennessee Valley as shown here. Not a favorable track leaving California really on the dry side for an extended period of time since January 1st. Ocean water temperatures across the Pacific. We cannot blame the current weather pattern on an El Nino or La Nina. Right now we see a mixed bag of warm and cool across the equatorial Pacific Ocean where we do measure that index. Elsewhere in the northern and central Pacific, we continue to see pockets of warm or above average water, including the California Bight as shown here. And largely this is the lack of storms moving across that area. Now what about the long range outlook? So this is just released today. The outlook taking us all the way through into early March or March 6. On the last video, I promised you some precipitation in March. It looks like it's gonna be a close call again. A very similar pattern as to what we're dealing with on February 22nd, storm coming down from the north, possibly picking up a little bit of moisture before it turns the corner. So the main chance for precipitation in this outlook into early March would be Southern California and then a very wet pattern for the plains. Now we continue to see colder air, which ends up being about average for Southern California, but colder air with that storm track coming right out of Canada and Alaska across the Rockies. Again, this is late February through early March. Now let's take a look at the longer range outlook, which covers a couple weeks in the middle of March. I did promise you a little precipitation in March on earlier videos, and it looks like that is still the expectation, but that might only give us near average conditions in Southern California. As indicated here, it looks like the best chance for above average would be the desert Southwest and continuing below average precipitation or mainly dry for Northern California. Temperature wise, cold air still coming from the North, same storm track from the North. Looks like it'll continue into March. And so we see uh, much below average temperature potential for the Great Basin all the way into the plains, but warmer than average conditions for much of California and building as we go through the month. Now, what about a longer outlook? This is fresh off the press, and this takes us March 7th through March 20th. And basically, we're looking at average precipitation, which is good for California because we'll take anything at this point now. Um, and the main promise, though, for wetter conditions will be the desert southwest as that storm track comes down from the north and turns the corner there and also draws up some tropical moisture potentially. Now, on the flip side, for an early spring, we also see above average temperatures likely for almost all of California as shown here. So this takes us through a good portion, two week portion of the month of March. Okay, what's the outlook for March? It looks like what we've been talking about continues with better chances of drier than average across all of the West, especially the Pacific Northwest and California. And as a result, warmer than average conditions with the jet stream just going too far to our East and North. Now, what about all the way through the spring months, March through May? We have been talking about this since the fall for an early spring and a drier than average spring. And that still looks like that's the latest forecast for California and even drying out in the desert Southwest with above average temperatures, below average precipitation with a potential for continued wet conditions in the Tennessee Valley as shown here. So again, this takes us all the way through May 2020, the spring outlook.